So Logic Pro X just put out a major update and it looks kind of similar to Ableton Live. So I'm gonna put them both to the test. I'm gonna produce a song in Logic Pro X and I'm gonna produce a song in Ableton Live and see which one I like better. This is Logic Pro X versus Ableton Live. Opera released Logic Pro X version 10.5 in May of 2020, recently updating it again to 10.5.1, and it came with some major upgrades, most notably Live Loops, which uses a grid of cells that you trigger to create different patterns, loops, samples, and recorded audio. Uh, let's see what we got here. These cells and the way they're laid out remind me a lot of the stockable loops in Ableton Live. So I'm going to produce a short piece of music in the Live Loops section of Logic Pro X and really focus on ease of use, functionality, creativity, and the interface. I'll do the same in Ableton Live using some loop libraries I already own, and I'll record some real instruments into both sessions. I'll also consider the price tag of both Logic Pro X and Ableton. Logic Pro X comes in at $199.99. For the full version of Ableton Live Suite 10, you're looking at $749. In Logic Pro X, you can toggle between the Live Loops view and the multi-track view, just like Ableton, and produce your song jumping between both workspaces. However, Logic Pro's layout also gives you the option to display both the Live Loops view and the multi-track view as a split screen, while in Ableton, you have to toggle between multi-track and Live View by pressing the Tab button. Split screen monitors are definitely preferred when producing on both Ableton and Logic Pro, so you can see both views side by side. But Logic has the upper hand here, in my opinion, with its layout. The Live Loops cell grid in Logic is arranged vertically in what they call scenes. You could trigger each cell individually in Jam Parts Live, or you could play all the cells in the scene together by pressing the up arrow at the bottom of the scene. If I push the stop button, it should stop all of them. There we go, yeah. The cells are organized by loops, audio files, and samples. You can edit a cell's parameters such as speed, loop length, and pitch, which appear in the inspector interface on the left-hand side of the screen. So here's the speed. I'm going to tweak the speed. I'll speed it up. I can make it two times the speed, and half the speed. The inspector interface controls each channel strip and has faders for inputs, outputs, busing effects, and automation controls. On the right hand side is your Logic Pro loop browser of samples, loops, and audio recordings. You can preview sounds by clicking on a file and the loop will play on your speakers or will audition over your existing arrangement. Thunderclap. When you find a sound you like, you simply drag it into your grid where you can manipulate it with the inspector interface. Once you have a good bank of cells to play with, you can then start crafting your song and jam it in real time. It allows you to feel the flow of a song if you know the parts well, and for many artists and DJs, helps give you a sense of where a part should come in or drop or fade out during your arrangement. It's kind of nine inch nailsy. I like that. Now I have a bunch of cool sounds I can play with and I'm gonna just kind of jam a song and record it into the multi-track view in Logic and just kind of feel my way around. So the way that you record is you have to enable performance recording. You have to click on that and then I have to click here which is show hide tracks view. So this is the multi-track view. When I hit record it's gonna let me perform all my little parts into the window on the right. So I'm gonna hide the loops window for now so I have more surface area to see what I'm doing. Then you just hit record, it gives me a click and then I can start playing. So here we go. Three, four. I'm just gonna drop that beat in. Drop another beat in. 
Now you can see it's recording on the right hand side. Put another one in. I'm gonna blow this up so you can see better. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna drop in my synth here in a second. Ready? Yes. And then to top it off, my harps pattern. Yes. I'm gonna back off on that. It's a little hot. Okay, this is cool. So, I have all those things going. You can see it's recording there. I'm gonna start kind of like putting other stuff in. this scene right here. Yeah, I dig that. I dig that. That's a cool way to change. Okay, now I can make the first scene happen. It's almost like a breakdown. I'm gonna end my song here. I'm just gonna hit stop. Right after this part. Perfect. And then I'm gonna hit stop up here, and then boom. Now, it's all grayed out because right now I'm in live loops mode, but if I click this arrow, it'll set it to multi-track mode, and now I can listen to what I just recorded. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how to record a MIDI keyboard into Logic. So I have an Axiom 49 keyboard here connected with an M-Audio MIDI to USB connector into my computer. And I'm gonna make a new track in Logic and just try to make up something off the top of my head. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna make a new software instrument track. And that brings up this classic electric piano. I'm just gonna blow it up so you can see it better. If I put in record, yep, that's what it sounds like. So my MIDI keyboard is connected. Now I'm gonna go and change the sound to this Alchemy synthesizer. It's kind of darker, you know, it's kind of more. I'm gonna change it to Space Pad, which I like. It's kind of like the spacey thing, but it also has birds in it. I'm gonna hit record. So that's my synth part. It's very simple. I use one finger to play the synth. It's all good. I have my synth recorded down here. I'm gonna listen back and see how it came out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to record drums into Logic. Now I only have an Mbox Mini which has two inputs. So I'm just going to do like a stereo overhead on my drums. And just see what it's like to record drums into Logic while listening to the track. Just see what the experience is like. So I'm going to build a new track. I'm going to go up to Track, New Audio Track. And there it is. I'm going to expand it a little bit. Put it into Record. I'm going to rename it Drums. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record drums using the Logic remote. You should be able to start the recording from in here and it'll record in the control room while I'm in the live room. So let's try it out. I connected it via Wi-Fi. It was really easy to connect. So I'm just gonna hit record and see how this works.
I'm done with the recording and hit stop. Boom. It's recorded. Let's go hear what it sounds like. My impressions of Logic so far, I really am digging Logic. Like the layout, the way you could have the multi-track view and the live loops view on the same screen, the way you could record instruments, the way you can add synthesizers. It's very simple and I haven't really experienced any latency. Everything seems to be right on time in real time as I'm playing it. The Logic Pro app to be able to control your recording while you're in the live room in the control room was super cool and um, that is super helpful. It seems like very powerful. And the price, $200 for Logic Pro and to get all these features and all these sounds, that is a killer price. If you own multiple Apple devices, you could download it on every device, which is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna do the same thing with Ableton that I did with Logic, but instead of recording keyboard and drums, I'm gonna record bass and guitar and just see how that works. I'm gonna create a new Ableton session and get going. Ableton Live 10 Suite version 10.1.15 is the favorite of many musicians because of its freeform performance and improvisational capabilities. Many producers use really fun MIDI controllers for writing and performing new beats and keyboard parts in Ableton, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to stick to loops and samples because I just don't have one of those super dope Ableton controllers like Novation Launchpad, Akai APC, or an Ableton Push. But I will write out some MIDI beats because that's where the power of Ableton really lies. The Ableton interface is laid out in two screens, the arrangement view and the session view. The session view is more for improvising and performance-based music production, while the arrangement view is the more standard left-to-right audio interface we're all accustomed to. Ableton uses clips which are made up of audio samples or MIDI sequences. In the session view, you organize your clips into scenes which resemble a regular digital mixing interface with faders and I.O. controls. The scenes play horizontally across the interface to the master fader on the right. You can jam on separate clips up and down the tracks or click on the small play button icon in the master fader to trigger an entire scene. Now remember back in Logic, Logic pretty much copied this entire interface but swapped it from horizontal to vertical. I think they both work really well, but what makes the difference for me are the different viewing options in Logic. You can blow up a track, zoom, or squeeze down an entire section of music easily. There are two simple faders for vertical zoom and horizontal zoom, and it moves both the live loops view and the session view simultaneously. Whereas in Ableton, you could simply press the plus minus buttons on your computer to zoom in and out, which is great, but the vertical zoom is clunky and that brightly colored navigation bar at the top of the arrangement view is not the best for quickly zooming in and out of an edit. Let me see if I can make it zoom in, there we go. So for me, it's a little tricky um, getting back and forth. I get confused sometimes as to what's playing and what's not. But I'm sure if you're in Ableton all the time, it'll become second nature and you'll just be able to fly through it, no problem. I just, I'm just not there yet. It took me a minute to figure things out, but the interface just feels a little dated and is not as exciting or as fresh as Logic Pro looks to me now. On the left-hand side is the collections window, which has all your Ableton packs, which includes soft synths, audio loops, and MIDI sequences. Here you can search through different categories of instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, and place them onto a track. Once the track is connected to a pack of sounds, you could start producing your clips and edit the parts in the MIDI interface at the bottom of the screen. Here you can write drum beats and synth lines and adjust parameters within the pack, like compression and EQ. What's nice about Ableton is you could start mixing your track on the fly since the faders are right in front of you. In Logic, you could bring up the mixer view while running live loops, but it takes up some real estate on the screen. Ableton has the upper hand here with the built-in mixer in the session view. All right, so now we're in Ableton Live and I'm just gonna try to produce a song in Ableton like I did with Logic. The first thing I found was a lot of the stock sounds in here. When I drop them in, they show up as a part that you have to write which is kind of cool. Like you have to write it with MIDI so I can write something. So 
I just wrote a little drum part. And then what you could do is you could duplicate those. Then I can make sort of a variation of that. So let's try something different. So I'm just double clicking and putting in all these little MIDI triggers. That's pretty cool. So I imported a bunch of loop files from my personal collection. So let's see what we're gonna do. That's kind of neat. Simple. I'm gonna drop that into the audio track and then if you see it appeared there in the audio track, now I can add it to the song. Maybe, maybe put a little reverb on it, turn it down. Okay, so I love this, I love this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record my performance in the session view into the multi-track view of Ableton. Um, in order to do that, this little icon right here has to be red. So you click on that little stop button and that disengages all of the session view and then we'll be able to record into the multi-track view. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now. I'm gonna go and hit record. It's gonna give me a click for one bar and then I can start jamming. So let's try it out. Now, as you can see, it's recording into the multi-track view. So whatever I'm doing in this session view is getting recorded on this side. So if I switch to this, you'll see that that kind of changes right here. So I'm also writing automation, like sending it to the delays. And that's it. That's my song. So now you can see that my track is all grayed out, right? So it doesn't look like it's active. So you have to turn off that red icon in order to make these tracks active in the multi-track. So now I turn it off. And now they're all active. And I can go through here and start to edit and mix my song. So what I'm going to do now is record a bass line into the song and see what I can come up with. So now I'm going to record a bass line into Ableton. I have my bass going through my boss pedal over here, going out of my boss pedal into my M box. On Ableton, in order to create a new track, you go up to Create, Insert Audio Track, and then it'll drop an audio track in there for you. And then you want to put it into Record Mode, and then you want to put it into input monitoring mode. All right, so now I can hear my bass. I have my inbox configured properly where the latency is not too much. Um, there is some latency, so it's kind of throwing me off. Sounds like there's a little delay, but that's okay. my part into there. Let me take it out of record. I can make a loop out of this bass part and just kind of loop it all through the song. All right, so that was pretty easy to do. I was able to record my bass straight into Ableton and then kind of chop it up. I would say that was pretty simple and that was cool, except the only thing I'm having an issue with is the latency with Ableton. Like it's a little longer than Logic, so it is kind of throwing me off. So now I'm ready to record a guitar part. I'm gonna do the same thing I did as the bass, but I have a guitar amp set up out there with a microphone in front of it. Let's record a guitar part and see how that works. So 
here's my guitar part. So really I'm just taking one loop here. So as you can see, it's super easy to record a guitar too. I just had the amp out there. That's my guitar part, and that's it. All right, so here's my takeaways on Ableton. Ableton is a lot of fun. It's easy to use. I love the interface. Just getting around and like viewing things and expanding things and zooming in on things is a little difficult for me. Also toggling between the session view and the multi-track view is okay, but I do wish like Logic has them on one screen side by side. So I do wish you could have some sort of way to do that in Ableton. I'm sure there's a way, I just haven't figured it out. The latency in Ableton kind of gave me a headache. When I recorded the bass and I recorded the guitar into Ableton, they would be slightly off of what I was hearing. Um, so that was kind of a problem. Um, I played with the latency inside of Ableton, but it didn't really help me a whole lot. I did get it closer, but it wasn't ever perfect. And that's probably because of the Mbox I'm using. I'm sure there's other interfaces that would work a lot better with Ableton. But in Logic, the Mbox worked perfectly for me, which was nice. And also having the Logic Pro app in your hand, that's killer. I think Logic is a little easier to use than Ableton, in my opinion. And there's a lot more in Logic I haven't discovered yet. I know Ableton is used by a lot of producers. I love it. I've, I've worked with it a few times. But I think Logic just is more intuitive. The layout, it's more simple for the price and for the interface and for the controllability. I think Logic is beating Ableton in my opinion. Like and subscribe to CNET's YouTube channel for more versus videos like this one. Also, let me know in the comments what your favorite music production software is. Mine's Pro Tools. And let me know if I missed anything in Ableton or Logic. And I uploaded these songs to a SoundCloud account, so you can go check them out. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.